Season 2 is the most important season in The Simpsons history. I know I'm supposed to build up to that kind of statement, put in some kind of Simpsons reference here to ease us in, but forget it. Season 2 is the most important. I think there's an overarching argument that the second season is the most important for any series' long-term health, but I don't know if I can back up that grandiose statement. But for The Simpsons, and its completely weird and groundbreaking first season, here is where the development really happens. Everything that you love about The Simpsons, you can probably thank Season 2 for. First, let's take inventory on what's old and what's new in terms of the characters. Who came in, who faded out, who's around but still underdeveloped. Season 2 is kind of a weird bird in that a lot of those old Season 1 guys are still around, but you can see the show constantly branching out, figuring out who the main groups of people are. There are a ton of regulars who make their debut in Season 2. Mayor Quimby, Jacqueline Bouvier, Dr. Hibbert, Roger Myers Jr., Lionel Hutz, Dr. Nick, McBain, Troy McClure, Dredrick Tatum, Hans Molman, Groundskeeper Willie, Professor Frank, Miss Hoover, the real Ralph Wiggum, Snake, and Comic Book Guy, among others. That's a pretty staggering list. It's hard to imagine the show without people like Comic Book Guy and Willie around. However, the real standout of these new guys in Season 2 is Dr. Hibbert. Even though he's new, the show liked him immediately, featuring him in several episodes. This was a much more stern and no-nonsense version, though. The laughing and incompetence came later. They really start to nail down the different settings and the character groups that you'll find there. We start seeing a regular group of barflies, for example. Lenny and Carl are established as Homer's main co-workers, even if Carl's voice was a work in progress. At Springfield Elementary, Milhouse becomes the guy. He's the best friend character. And we'll have kids like Martin, Nelson, and Ralph as the supporting characters. Richard, Lewis, and Wendell are certainly still around, and even have speaking lines, but it's clear the show doesn't think they're a thing. Sorry guys. We do see some old Season 1 folks hanging around still, like Dr. J. Lauren Pryor, The Winfields, and Bleeding Gums Murphy. The show had started to fade these characters out considerably, with only one or two appearances for each. They're still hanging on to Dr. Marvin Monroe, though, still trying to keep him kind of relevant. I guess Harry Shearer hasn't gone to the writers yet. If we're talking secondary characters, though, we have to talk about Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns basically owns Season 2. He's like the MVP of the entire thing. I mean, he had good stuff in Season 1, let's be clear, but here's where the writers fell absolutely in love with this guy. He plays a key role in so many episodes. He runs for governor, runs over Bart, gets painted by Marge, and then feuds with them over a blood transfusion. I really enjoy the personal bent to Mr. Burns in Season 2, how he'll enjoy a beer with Homer or watch boxing at his house. How often are we going to see Burns and Apu interact? More typically though, a lot of his most famous running jokes get established right here, like bribing safety inspectors, being hilariously weak, and making his pointless ominous warnings. Characters like Moe, Principal Skinner, and Krusty the Clown developed somewhat gradually through the first six seasons. Mr. Burns got fully formed more rapidly, arguably the first secondary character to do so. Consequently, we also get a lot of Smithers development in Season 2. Not exactly doing a lot of gay jokes and stuff yet, that comes later, but Smithers is cool in what a gamut of emotions he goes through during this era. We see villainous Smithers, quote-unquote best friend Smithers, desperate and miserable Smithers. No diamond-stealing Smithers, though. The show is still nervous about fully giving these secondary characters their own spotlight episodes. Like, Burns did run for governor, but this is really told through the POV of Homer and Marge. Same with the season finale example. Instead, they were sort of dipping their toe in the water, first opening things up to the extended family. They gave Patty and Selma their own spotlight episode, and then one for Grandpa. Old Money does sort of turn into a Homer and Grandpa story in the end. I'd argue that Principal Charming would be the real first example here. It sticks out like a sore thumb among the rest of the family storylines. In a good way, of course. They needed to expand the scope of the stories. In terms of guest stars, Season 2 continued the trend of having celebrities play characters instead of themselves with two notable exceptions. Larry King shows up to read a book on tape, and Ringo Starr hung Marge's painting on his wall. Notice how careful they're being, however. Neither of these guest stars are actually meeting the Simpson family. 
they're still very well insulated. The writers have broken the seal on celebrities showing up in the world of Springfield, but are still keeping them at arm's length. Spoiler warning, this is going to change very soon. In terms of plot structure, Season 2 contains what I would describe as well-rounded traditional plots. Season 2 hates the idea of the opening set piece. Every first act ties in clearly with what happens afterwards. Same with its final acts. There aren't a lot of sharp pivots towards something unexpected, not many huge changes in scenery. Bart gets hit by a car is the lone exception, which pivots really hard, and unconvincingly, into a marriage crisis in Act 3. They only have two episodes divided into an A plot and B plot, both very late in the season. As a whole, they generally set up one core theme, one core story idea, and then write it to its conclusion. Season 2 plots are very classical, very down to earth. It's a really classy season, you know what I mean? Even its TV and film parodies are integrated seamlessly. They're not interested in just name dropping stuff. Season 2 goes for recreating the parody itself, with the camera angles and the direct quotes. And they'll go for mostly classic stuff, like Citizen Kane, The Graduate, and Gone with the Wind. They really like Gone with the Wind. They do it like three times during the year. They should be saying, I'll never be quoting this again. It's really saying something when The Wonder Years is your most trendy parody of the year. The show is definitely marching forward to being more referential, they're just sticking to the classics for now to remain timeless. Now, this point should be relatively obvious given YouTube's visual medium, but the animation and art style improved dramatically from seasons 1 to 2. Just look at how much better these crowd scenes are. Incredible. Now we just have to get rid of these weird Bart and Lisa doppelgangers. Overall, there's just so much more detail to the backgrounds in Season 2. Places like The Simpsons House, Moe's Bar, and Mr. Burns' Office are how we expect them to look. We get a lot more flavor stuff in there too, like Flanders family photos, the organ lady and her muscular hunks, little things to add character. The color palette, in general, is really nice. They love using these beautiful pinks, purples, and blues, especially in early morning scenes. There's a lot of shadow work. The coloration can sometimes come off a little too thick, a little too rich, but I don't really mind it. I love how distinctly hand-painted this season feels. The only weird stuff to season 2 is its character design quirks, especially with Homer's hair. For a while they seemed to want the M to be curly and then they changed their mind and switched it back to the straight M that we all know. Also, Bart's shirt is this weird dirty orange color sometimes, like Marge forgot to wash it. At least it's not blue though. Season 2 is an important tipping point in the series in that it started getting more topical and satirical. Season 1 stories tended to be adventures, about specific things happening and how the characters react to them. It's not like they did a full satire on safety laws and the nature of childhood bullying. The satire was definitely in there, but not really discussed in specific detail. Season 2 is where the issues come into clear focus. A look at business culture and how our appearance influences people. A cynical look at the world of politics. TV violence and censorship. Religion and stealing. The way we treat the elderly. Season 2 comes off as maybe the most preachy Simpsons season, but it's not necessarily a bad thing, especially this early on. They were making it clear that they weren't just being subversive just to be contrarian. They are a show of substance with a point of view. A very humble and working class point of view. Much like in the first season, money problems continue to be a major obstacle for the family. However, they take this mentality one step further. Season 2 is really interested in showing what underdogs the Simpsons are as a family, how they often just can't win. Houses will self-destruct to avoid living with them, Homer's half-brother loses everything when discovering he's a Simpson, Marge realizes that she shouldn't try to change the world. Failure is easily the most overarching theme of season 2. I mean, it's in two of the episode's titles, for goodness sake. So far, we've talked about a lot of the big picture stuff, the secondary characters and whatnot, but we gotta get back to the family. The Simpson family definitely remained the central focus of season two. Much of it was spent developing these characters, looking at their various relationships, and in some cases, deconstructing them. Let's look at Lisa, for example. She's always a good starting point. There's definitely some of that season one brattiness to her, 
Look at her taking advantage of Grandpa or cutting in line at the water park. She'll have fun singing the theme song to Shaft. But season two is where she starts becoming the sort of moral center of certain episodes. That philosophical side of her comes into view. How she'll wax poetic about baseball, teach Bart about meditation, find a feminist icon at the monster truck rally. It's less about Lisa being depressed and persecuted, it's more about her being curious and wanting more out of life. Lisa is branching out. She wants sushi. Margie's portrayal is the nicest surprise of the group, to be honest. Season 2 treated her really well. Marge is not really dumped on this season. There aren't many jokes about her giving up or feeling underappreciated. In fact, Marge mixes it up quite a bit with some difficult issues, going on crusades against TV violence, for example. She goes up against Mr. Burns on two separate occasions and comes out on top in both. They demonstrate how talented she is at stuff like painting and sewing, how smart and successful she was in high school. Marge is portrayed as someone who is not to be underestimated, someone who is resourceful and who will take a stand. I really like this season too, Marge. I wish we'd see more of this. Lisa kind of took over some of this role, but I would like to see some of the savvy and calculated Marge more often. Compared to his wife, Homer didn't change as dramatically in season two. With him, it was more about exploring relationships and pushing the envelope on his stupidity. Yes, Homer does indeed get stupider every year. Season 2 is no different. He's less bumbling sitcom dad, more cartoony oaf at this point. Oof, that cliff. Homer's stories tend to revolve around his various relationships. We get an exploration of his marriage and how the two of them met in high school. We see an ethical debate between he and Lisa and an examination of how poorly they connect emotionally. His parenting skills with his son, the way he pressures him into bad situations, even the way he treats his own father. The Blowfish episode is perhaps the most quintessential Homer story of the season, perhaps ever, as it's basically a parade of all of his relationships. We're not really getting at what makes him tick. That exploration is generally left to Bart. I think Bart is the star of season two, the character the writers worked on the most. I mean, it makes sense given Bart mania and what a breakout star he was in season one, you're gonna give the kids some face time. They could have just let him run free, be a total gimmicky hellion during all 22 episodes. But season two was really interested in what makes Bart Bart, what is actually behind the mask. Let's look at his underachiever and proud of it angle. Is Bart a kid that doesn't try or care? What causes someone like him to fail? Let's look at all this bad and destructive stuff he does. What drives him to do it? His relationship with his sister. They literally have Bart wondering aloud why he does what he does. His characterization contains a nice combination of continuing his rambunctious stuff that made him a star, but being thoughtful enough to give him depth. He very easily could have become the Poochie. Doing episodes like these really help keep him in balance. These are totally the progenitor for later episodes like Radio Bart or Bart Sells His Soul. I think season two is a fascinating one to revisit for this very reason. To see all those seeds planted, all those story concepts they continue to revisit. To look at Flanders and say, huh, he's starting to get a little more religious. To look at the beginning of Selma's story arc, to witness their very first Treehouse of Horror. The reason that season two doesn't feel as weird as season one is the fact that almost all these experiments were successful. You don't get the kind of evolutionary dead ends that were in the first season. They very quickly grasped what's working, what isn't, what they can change, like all good season twos do on television. Yes, it is certainly more slowly paced, relaxed, and traditional than the later iterations, but this is basically the show that we all know and love. Season one's successes got them to season two. Season two's successes got them to season six. Or something like that. I'm speaking more figuratively here. Season 2 proved that The Simpsons wasn't a fluke. That it had lasting appeal. The show is here to stay. And boy did it stay. Disney should be thanking Season 2 right now. Also, before I forget, I just have to mention how much I hate that stupid winking fish. Ugh, I hate it so much. Maybe I should have mentioned earlier that Season 2 is kind of corny. But let's not focus on that unpleasantness. Let me know in the comments what you think of Season 2. What is that flavor that makes it so special? 
Is it Marge's MSG? Is it that little bit of poison? Let me know. I'll be back eventually to rank the top 10 if I can ever figure out a good order for them. Season 2 is surprisingly consistent in quality. Thanks for watching.